Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today we're talking FPV. This is the intro to my new FPV series in which I'm going to show you how to select the right gear, build the right model, put it all together and enjoy the wonderful world of first person view RC model flying, which is basically flying a model as if you were sitting right there in the model and looking out the front. Um, it's an amazing way to fly models. In some ways it's a lot easier than flying by standing on the ground and looking upwards. So I'm going to go through all the bits and pieces. I mean, there's so much stuff. You've got these, oh, it's all tangled up here, never mind. I've got things like these, these Fat Shark goggles. I mean, that, you can spend a lot of money on some of this gear. Fat Shark goggles with this trans, there's receivers for the FPV, there's transmitters, there's cameras. There's so many different bits and pieces that it's going to take a few videos to explain this stuff. And I'll try and go in, in relatively fine detail. And, but first of all, we're going to do an overview, just an overview of what you need and a brief talk about that and then I'll cover each area in a little more detail. So my desk is littered with FPV stuff. Let's have a look at what's on here and what it all does. The first thing I'd like to look at is cameras and they come in a wide range of sizes, shapes and different specifications. Um, basically you get what you pay for in most cases. Cheap cameras are just cheap cameras. Here's a cheap camera. This is one from Hobby King. Excuse the fact it's on this little piece of core flute or coroplast. Um, I think these are about $16, maybe $20, I'm not sure. They're a really entry-level CCD camera from um, Sony, I think they are. And I mean, they work. They work perfectly fine. You get a picture out of them, you can see where you're going, you can see the sky, but they have limitations. If you use a cheap camera, don't expect the same results from your $16 camera as you might get from one that costs, say, $120, like this one. This is a far more expensive camera. It, it handles things like changing light much more effectively. Uh, these cheaper cameras, when you are flying towards the sun you may not be able to make it much of the ground below you would look like a, a just a dark smudge because they don't handle changes in light they when you go from dark to light they're very poor these are much better but you're paying for that extra performance and you're paying quite a bit more you can pay five times six times as much for a camera like that if you're getting into fpv then i recommend you just buy a cheap one and see how it goes uh, because if you don't like fpv you haven't wasted so much money then of course there are things like this this is the hobby king wingman camera um I've come to find that this one isn't particularly good. It's got a, I think the little sensor chip is actually on an angle inside the camera body. So one side is sharp and the other side is fuzzy and no amount of tweaking the focus will get rid of that. So I don't use it. Um, Chinese quality control perhaps. Other people have reported having very good results with their wingman cameras, but I use my little keychain camera, which actually is on a model at the moment. So you can't see it. That's not real FPV, that's just recording. But when you do FPV, you want another camera on board to record the flight because the camera you use for your um, picture that comes back down to your glasses or your screen or whatever isn't as good a quality as these HD cameras so you want to get one of these as well pick one up I like the keychain as I say um, you can get one of these this is a CCTV camera these are available from any of the Chinese shops that are you know the, actually I think Hobby King's prices for these are actually better than most of these cheap CCD cameras from the Chinese you know discount shop so that's probably a good place to go but that's your camera that's going to give you your picture of course they're all color um, there's no HD for video downlinks at the moment. It's just not there. There's been talk of it, but I haven't seen one. If someone's got one, send me one, I'll review it. But at the moment, it's all standard definition. These cameras come in a range of resolutions from about 360 through to 550 lines. That means the vertical resolution, so the sharper the picture. Um, I think 550, a good 550 camera is about the best. It's really good. But you can get by with a, um, a, a lower resolution camera, a, a 420 or something like that. It's just fine, especially when you're beginning. So that's cameras. Once you've got a picture coming from your camera, you need to be able to send it back to the ground. And so you'll need a transmitter, an FPV video transmitter. And there's a huge range to choose from. This one here, for example, this is a, uh, I think it's a 1500 milliwatt, 900 megahertz. What do those numbers mean? Well, milliwatts is the amount of power, megahertz is the frequency on which they operate. Now these, in theory, these will travel much further, give you a much greater video range than something like this. This is a 200 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. The higher frequencies don't carry as well as the lower frequencies. And, but you do get more interference on these. And quite frankly, I don't much like the low frequency stuff because a lot of, it, a lot of cases it's illegal. You've got to check your country, make sure that your laws allow you to use these frequencies. A lot of this low frequency stuff is illegal. For example, this 900 megahertz transmitter, if you use this in a country where they have a GSM phone network and use it on channel one, it will conflict with the 
telephones. You'll get into all sorts of strife because it'll knock out the GS, uh, GSM telephone network around the area where you're flying. And even worse, well, perhaps not just as bad, telephone, when your mobile phone goes or if there's a mobile phone in the area, it could completely obliterate your video signal. So you've, you've got to know about the frequencies to use. I prefer 5.8 gigahertz, especially for the low end stuff and the entry level when you you may only want to fly a kilometre or a thousand yards away. I mean, these things, I've flown these out to 2,000 uh, yards, or two, over 2,000 yards, two kilometres. That's a long, long way, and they're pretty cheap. Um, this is from Hobby King. I forget how much it was. It was about 60 bucks or something. This is available everywhere, and I think they're about 60 or $70, maybe $80 with the matching receiver. But uh, what I've done, because... Obviously, we're looking at a low, low entry level here for people that want to get into FPV without spending a whole bunch of money. If you get one of those super cheap Hobby King cameras like this one here that I showed you before, I'm going to show you how to build one of these. And this is your own 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. Now, you'll notice it's an awful lot smaller and lighter than this great big bulky 900 megahertz one or even this commercial 200 milliwatt one. But this does the same job as that. Uh, what I've got here is a little module. You can pick these up for under 20 bucks. A little transmitter module and it sits on a little circuit board that I've made up easy peasy and on that circuit board there's a capacitor and there's a little voltage regulator and then we have an antenna that pokes out of here now you notice these commercial transmitters have these black dipole antennas and to be totally honest they're not very good they're pretty crap to be to be totally honest and they have all sorts of problems because depending on the attitude of your model the signal will significantly drop off the, the video will disappear and all sorts of things this is a cloverleaf antenna and you can make it yourself now, I'm not going to profess or claim that I've invented this. This is something that's uh, cloverleaf antenna has been known for quite some time. And a guy called, or well, goes under the name of IB Crazy, has been nice enough to simplify the design and uh, make the design parameters available. So I will link to a website in a later video where you can go to get all the information you need to make your own. I'll also link to a video which shows you how to build them. And it's not my video. Again, it's someone else who's done a really good job of showing you how to build these things. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel so to speak by showing you again his video is excellent so we'll do that and you'll be able to build this little wire antenna yourself this little cloverleaf use a 20 dollars module little circuit board i'll show you how to make that as well you don't even need a circuit board actually you can use vero board or something like that underneath here just to you know whatever because um, these are pretty self-contained modules and you'll get this you'll be able to make this for under 30 bucks and that will get you in the air and it'll give you up to two kilometers of range in the right conditions. It's more than enough for a little bareback FPV project that should be the first one we're doing. So those are transmitters. Now most of these of course um, will chew a bit of juice. You can run them off the main flight battery, your LiPo of your aircraft, or you can provide a separate battery. But whether you do that depends on a number of factors we'll look at later. So suffice to say, that's transmitters. Of course, having a camera to capture the image, then sending it down via transmitter is only half the solution. We must be able to receive the signal, the video signal, and that's where receivers come in. And this is a 900 megahertz receiver. It goes with that goldy colored 900 megahertz transmitter I showed you before. Those two are a pair. But again, one of the problems with these is they use these crappy dipole antennas. This is actually, um, you know, it looks big, but they don't work that well. So you don't get as much range as you might think. And also the 900 megahertz, 1.3 gigahertz ones, not that sensitive. They're not really that well designed. So you don't often get what you'd expect to get out of them. And this is the 5.8 gigahertz receiver. You notice it's much smaller again. 5.8 gigahertz stuff is much smaller than the lower frequency stuff. Here's one, and again, I've put a little circularly polarized cloverleaf antenna on here, and that gives a much better result. So this is the 5.8 gigahertz. I think these are about 30 bucks if you buy them like this. I'm gonna show you how to build one out of one of those little modules that I have in my transmitter board. That little module there, there's a matching receiver module, just the same, so you can make your own little receiver. So we'll make a receiver, but you can buy these, you can use this one. In fact, um, this little home built transmitter will work with this receiver, this commercial receiver. So you don't have to uh, buy, build them if you don't want to. And, and also, this is the matching commercial transmitter for that receiver. And so you can buy these as a pair and they work very well together. If you put these little cloverleaf antennas on, they work even better. So there you go, that's, that's the receivers we're looking at. But one thing also when I'm talking antennas and receivers, is if you want more range, you can use one of these. And this is what we call a patch antenna. Basically, the way it works is it, it has a focused beam. It looks along a very narrow path, so it can uh, it has more sensitivity along that path. So if you're flying out into the distance and you point this at your model, you go a lot further. This is a, I think it's a 11 decibel. So in theory, it's the same as having 
when it's pointed right at the model, it's the same as using with this transmitter a 2 watt transmitter, but you're only using 200 milliwatts. Of course, the problem is that if you fly outside the range or the beam of this antenna, you'll lose the signal. And I'll show you how to get over that later too with a little board that we're making up as part of the project. So that's receivers and receiver antennas. What about once the signal gets to your receiver, what are you going to use to look at it? How are you going to see that picture that comes from your model? And that's where these things come in. This is the original Fat Shark video goggles. And these are, these are pretty good. They were the industry benchmark, the standard by which all others were measured. It has a number of benefits over some of its competitors. Uh, there's now the Fat Shark Dominators, which I'll be doing a full review on very shortly. But I thought I'd show you these original ones. And these have the advantage they slip over your eyes, block out all the light, and basically your entire field of vision is filled with the picture that your plane sends back. There are some downsides to that because spreading that image out so, so wide, making it fill your whole field of view, means that it does get a little fuzzy. Uh, the new dominators address that uh, by making the, the field of view slightly narrower. And I'll show you the difference in the review. But suffice to say, you can buy these, but these are 250 bucks or 200 bucks or something. It's a lot of money, which is why, of course, I came up with the video visor that's right that's the welding helmet modified by fitting an lcd screen to the front your your receiver and antenna just velcros on the side and when you put it on it's like a set of fat sharks but much cheaper well actually it's not like a set of fat sharks it's not as good as the high priced options but it's a cheap way to go. These LCD screens are about $20 to $30. So it's a tenth the price of the Fat Sharks. Welding visors, you can pick those up anywhere for 10 bucks. It's pretty cheap. It's just nothing special. It's just a plain old welding visor and a bit of Velcro. One of those receivers we're talking about. And there you go. There's your FPV eyewear, so to speak. Uh, I suppose also has the advantage that if the plane hits you in the face, you won't get scarred for life. But that's basically the intro. The other thing we'll be looking at in another video is the aircraft we're going to use. And as I said, I want to do two levels of FPV. There's the entry level, and then there's the I've got more money than I know what to do with level. The entry level, we will be using the good old, much loved AXN floater. Someone sent me this one. Someone finally sent me an AXN for free. And it was, uh, who was it? It's written on here. It's Louis. Thank you, Louis. Um, Louis is actually the New Zealand Hobby King distributor, I think, and he sent me this for free, so I've been bought, you might say. Not really. Um, I've got an AXN here. I'll use this. We'll set it up from scratch, and we'll see just what's involved in it also. That's my intro. I hope you've learned a little bit, and we'll be looking at this in much more detail in coming videos, as long as the sun stays out, because the weather has been crap. And it's not forecast to get much better. This is the first sunny day we've had in a long time. So I'm going to take all this FPV gear and throw it on my AXN and see what happens. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now so don't miss the rest of it. If you want to donate, do so. I won't stop you. And I'll see you very soon on RC Model Reviews.